You ever got in trouble for doing the right thing? Like, it's one thing to get in trouble for doing the wrong thing, right? You get pulled over, you're going 12 miles over the speed limit, and the officer asks you a rhetorical question. He says, you know why I pulled you over? And some of y'all lie. You're like, I have no idea. You know your cruise was set on 72. You know it was, because you set it on 72. And now, most of y'all, you're like, hey, you got me, bro. I, I, I was beat. I, I'm sorry. Have mercy on my soul, you know? Can you do something where we won't go on my insurance? <laughs> Where's y'all like, hey, man, can I take a class? Is there anything I can do, man? Some of y'all already taken all the classes you can take. I know y'all. <laughs> but, but when you're not doing anything wrong, like they're preaching the power of Jesus, they're being faithful, and they get thrown in prison for doing the right thing. Now, if anybody had a reason to complain, be aggravated, upset, angry, mad, Paul and Silas did. Because now they're in, by the way, they were beaten before they were put in chains. So they're beaten and thrown into prison. Now, if anybody had a reason to go, God, why? This is so dumb. Be angry. They had a reason. They get in prison, but that's not how the story goes. Paul looks at Silas and goes, hey, I got an idea. Silas goes, we need something. This is bad. They're going to kill us. Paul goes, we should sing. Silas goes, another idea anything else in there. But they begin to sing. They begin to praise. They begin to worship. They begin to pray. And as they begin to magnify the Lord and exalt his name together, the foundation of the prison begins to shake. And all of a sudden, an earthquake happens in that one spot. And all of the prison doors come open. And all the prisoners are set free. But none of them leave. The jailer is getting ready to kill himself because he's afraid that he's failed catastrophically. And Paul looks at him and says, hey, bro, don't kill yourself. We're all here. He says, what must I do to be saved? He says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The jailer is saved. All his family is saved. It's a crazy, powerful moment that all happened because they didn't complain because they prayed. There's something powerful that happens when we pray. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's powerful. Now, now that's, the, that's the gospel side of it. That's the Bible side of it. But there's also been scientific studies done on prayer. Dr. Randolph Byrd, a cardiologist at San Francisco General Hospital, did a randomized double-blind study on 393 patients in which the patients nor the doctors or the nurses knew which group of the patients were being prayed for and which were not. So they prayed for them for a period of days, and at the end of those days, they checked on the status of all of the patients. And the results astounded the scientific community. Here's why. Because, because the men and women who were prayed for needed fewer drugs, spent less time on ventilators, and overall fared better than those who weren't prayed for. We don't always understand it, but here's what we know. There is power in prayer. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's power in prayer. So here's my question. Why is it that God doesn't always answer the prayer the way I want him to answer the prayer? Because Pastor, you walked out, you said he always answers prayer. And I know for a fact he don't. Because I prayed to God to give me a promotion, and now I'm praying for a new job. <laughs> Some of y'all, you've prayed for your relationship, and, and you're on your ninth marriage. But hey, if you're on your ninth marriage, there's a common denominator. <laughs> that was funny right there. My grandmother was married nine times. God rest her soul and all nine of my grandpas. God bless them all. I don't even know some of those dudes. They came and went so fast. <laughs> my lineage just goes, my family tree's all over the place. <laughs> hey, maybe you pray that God, <clears throat> that God would heal someone and they passed. How do, you, how do you reconcile that? Well, the scripture that I go to most when I'm talking to somebody about this is Isaiah 55 and verse eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways. Higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Sometimes God has already answered and we just don't see it. Sometimes he does it in a different way and we don't always understand it. Sometimes I say, God, I need provision and he gives me a promise. Sometimes I say, God, I need a way out and he, and, and he gives me a word. Sometimes I say, God, I need substance and he gives me a seed. He doesn't always answer the way that we want him to, but that doesn't mean that he hasn't answered. 
The problem is when he doesn't answer the way that we want him to answer, we get frustrated about it. You ever got mad at God because you gave him choices and he didn't choose one of your choices? How many are good test takers? Raise your hand if you're a good test taker. Oh, and you're proud of it too, aren't you? You're like, yeah, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Now, where's the rest of y'all at? Where's my people at? You're just not good at it. Come on, let's see you. So welcome to Hope. So welcome home. Those other people, that, some of y'all are like, okay, I'm going to sit next to you. I'm going to take notes off of you today. Oh, you wrote that down? I don't even know what he said, but I guess it was good because you, what scripture was it? Because I, I don't know. I don't even know Isaiah's in the Bible. I, I see y'all. <laughs> And some of y'all even taking notes. You're like, hey, can you text me all that? <laughs> I see you. Back in the day, take a test. Like whenever you would go take a test, like if, if, it, was, if it was multiple choice, like you had a chance, right? Like if it's multiple choice, I got a one in four chance of maybe possibly, perhaps, getting the answer right. If it's fill in the blank, I'm just dumb. <laughs> I got nothing. Like I'm just going, ah, I got nothing. Unless you have a gospel teacher and then you just put Jesus in all the blanks, be like, because he is the answer to every question. And just hopes you're like, oh, that boy's he's dumb as a rock, but well, that's good. It'll give you an A. <laughs> the challenge with some of us is, is we we look at God and we don't want fill in the blank tests. And God's tests are always fill in the blank. We want multiple choice, and we're the one who give him the choices. God, you can answer it A, B, or C. And God's like, D, none of the above. Because he doesn't always do it the way that we want him to do it. 